Hey guys, I'd love to talk to you about your training in your heart rate zone, getting maximal benefit from it and organizing your training so that it's really easy to determine what you should be doing today or over the course of a given week. So what we've done is we've organized blocks of time into what we call zone blocks. And if you remember, your heart rate can be broken down into different zones and in each zone you metabolize energy slightly differently each serves its own function and each should be trained independently and sometimes mixed and i've got different videos and podcasts to show you and tell you why that is but today i just want to make your training really simple for you so when you get a prescription from a catalyst coach what you'll see are so many blocks of zone one or so many blocks of zone two that we want you to accomplish a week and a zone block is a 30 minute block of time that's uh, within that zone as much as you possibly can. So for example, if we say that we want, you know, um, a, one block of zone two, that would mean you're going to do 30 minutes of zone two workout. Now I, I've given you uh, an example here. I've got somebody with a heart rate max of 180 and I've told you how to derive your max heart rate in previous videos. So if this person, if we took all their zones and we broke them down by number, we would see that they're entering zone two around 115 beats per minute and as long as they stay under 135 they're going to stay within zone two if they go above 135 they'll be in zone three and they'll start metabolizing more carbs than fat for fuel and if they go above 153 they'll be in zone four and above 170 is zone five so here's what's important with these zones you want to try and stick within this zone as closely as you possibly can because what happens here is if your heart rate for example let's say that you're going along in zone two and we're tracking your heart rate okay and so you start your workout you bring your heart rate up to zone two and you keep it there but it keeps rising 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 and eventually it goes above 135 here just for a minute and then you notice and you bring it back down what happens in that little tiny bump right here is that you start metabolizing carbs for fuel and you start to enter an anaerobic state and it's not for long and your body can handle it and if you bring it right back into zone two again you know that's okay you know and you can start working or carry on with your block but if you keep doing that you know over and over either a number of times to a small degree or, you know, maybe once you dramatically exceed that zone, you can't bring it back. You, you can't just go back to metabolizing only fats for fuel. And so the primary intent of the workout has been lost. You haven't wasted your whole day. You still had a good workout. You still achieved some value. It's just the value of training in zone three and not zone two. So ideally we want you to stay within that block. And that's why we limit each block to 30 minutes because most of your workouts will last longer than 30 minutes outside the gym we might say that this workout you're going to accumulate two zone two blocks so maybe it's a one hour bike ride in zone two but maybe we've got a workout for you that's like a jog and we're going to say you're going to start off with 30 minutes one block of zone two and then after that you're going to be doing some higher intensity interval training where you're going to be going between zone three and zone four so what do you count then you count the highest heart rate achieved for that block so for example if you do 30 minutes of you know pure zone two your heart rate never goes below 115 and it never goes below 135 fantastic now we're going to go into intervals and during these intervals if we just graph your heart rate okay so we're going along nicely in zone two and then we start doing these intervals you bring your heart rate all the way up here okay you're going along zone two zone two bring your heart rate all the way up here to like zone five and then it starts to come back down and zone five and come back down this is actually a zone five block so it's really like the highest metric achieved is what's going to give you the primary benefit so this block that you've just hit here you know you you may be at 170 plus you know in zone five for like 30 seconds right at your max you can't hold it but the primary value that you sustain there is like vo2 max 
because all the time spent ramping up to that level and all the time spent ramping down, you're still in that zone. So we would call this workout that you just completed, you spent 60 minutes, you, you get one zone two block and one zone five block, okay? So even though you had to go through zone three, zone four, and then hit zone five, within that 30 minutes of time, you calculate the block as being the highest heart rate achieved. So you've got a zone two and a zone five. So one question that we really frequently get here is like, well, you know, what if, what if I'm going along and I'm doing really, really well at zone two and my heart rate is slowly coming up over time, you know, and then it just, just misses it because I've got to go over a hill and I just slightly rise above zone two. That's fine. You know, one little perforation does not ruin the whole block here. Okay. Where you have to, where you start to lose value is when you're repeatedly getting into zone three over and over and over again, your heart rate's going up and down. At that point, your body is going to start breaking down carbs. And once it starts, it's not going to stop. So you're going to keep getting lactic acid buildup, even if you're dropping down to zone two and like buffering that buildup, getting rid of the waste products, the process is, has been kicked off and it's going. Okay. So really you have to use your judgment here a little bit, but if most of that block is in zone two, it's probably a zone two block. But if you got out of zone two by a significant amount at one point or by a little bit at several points, it's probably a zone three block. Okay. So it is really tricky in some of these blocks to like stay within the zone that you want. And that that's why in, um, the podcast I did about like, what is multimodal interval training when you're doing zone one, zone two, you want to stick with like one modality, cycling, jogging, swimming, whatever that is, because every time you switch modalities, your heart rate's going to do two things. First, it's going to drop as you come in off the run and pick up the kettlebell, you're going to recover a little bit. Second, it's probably going to spike, which means because you're introducing this new movement, your body is not like in, in flow yet. And so your heart rate is going to spike again. And so every time you introduce like a second or a third modality, you're going to get a crazy wave in your heart rate. And so when you're, when you're doing like zone three, zone four, zone five, that's fine. And sometimes your coach might actually prescribe these intervals on purpose because you know, he or she wants you to go up and then recover quickly and up and recover quickly. And that's great. But when you're trying to hold a zone two or a zone one block, it's a lot easier just to keep it simple. Okay. So one block is about 30 minutes. You, the block that you get credit for is usually the highest heart rate achieved. Um, and the, the last key is like, you are not ever going to stay in zone five for a full 30 minutes. You're never going to stay in a zone four for a full 30 minutes. It is going to be hard to stay in a zone three for a full 30 minutes, but you know, elite athletes can do that. Um, the key though, is that you've entered zone five once or several times during that block. And that's what makes it a zone five block. And the same with zone four. If, if you've touched zone four a few times, within that 30 minute block, then it's a zone four block. If you exceed it, you go up to zone five at one point, that's probably a zone five block. Okay. So we, we do this to make prescriptions easy. So now instead of saying you must come to class and do this particular workout on Monday, or you failed for the week, we're going to say, we need you to accumulate four zone two blocks, one zone five block and one strength block. Here's the typical class structure at Catalyst. So let's say that you came in and up on the whiteboard was, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do rowing technique, we're gonna build up to a 2000 meter row, and then we're going to be working on front squats after that. What that probably means is that the first half of the class, the thir first 30 minute block is going to be a zone three block for most people, unless the instructor tells you to race it and then you'll get one strength block after that okay so when you're tracking later you can check off that you've done one zone three block and one um, strength block if you don't have any zone three blocks in your prescription you can go super duper hard maybe on that row you know you tell your coach like hey i don't have any zone threes but i need to get a zone five the coach is going to say all right this just became a full out 2k for time for you you're going to spend most of your time in like that that higher heart rate zone so this is going to count as a zone five and then we'll work on our our strength block after that 
The point of using blocks is to simplify things. A block is 30 minutes of time. The, you don't have to be perfectly in that zone for the whole 30 minutes, but the more you're out of that zone, the more you change uh, the stimulus, the catalyst of that block. Hope that helps.